Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we'll be discussing uh, basics of rectifier circuits and especially half wave rectifier. And then we'll discuss example 3.1 solved in the Mr. Chapman's book of electrical machines. So let's first of all recall what is a rectifier circuit. A rectifier circuit is a circuit that converts AC power to DC power. So let's see, this is the input, 120 volt. We are using a transformer to convert it to a lower voltage, 9 volt uh, RMS. Uh, this may be used for charging of mobile or laptop, etc. Now this is still AC. We have to make it DC. For that, we will pass it through a rectifier circuit. It can be half wave rectifier, full wave rectifier. So here it is full wave rectifier, so the rectified output. And then with the help of a capacitor circuit, this output is filtered, so it will have a shape like this. And if we need a more accurate, then we have to use the IC regulator circuit to make it a perfect DC. Uh, this uh, DC is then uh, connected with the load. Okay, there are two time scales that are used. If the signal is in, in, in terms of a uh, sine T, then we use the T scale. And if it is in terms of a sine omega T, then we use omega T scale. And in uh, T scale, we just write 0, 1, 2, 3. These are in maybe seconds or milliseconds, etc. But in omega t, we have to use the pi scale, so 0 and pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, etc. So the most common type of rectifiers, uh, four most common are as shown here. The first is the half wave rectifier, and this is how the output looks. And then we have full wave bridge rectifier or full wave uh, any full wave rectifier will look like this. The third is the three phase half wave rectifier. So the output is much better now, smoother than these. And finally, we have three phase full wave rectifier whose output is quite smooth. Now, let's just take one example. Uh, first of all, we'll talk about a ripple. And if you see, if you throw a stone in the pond, these are this shape, uh, you can see this is called ripple. So the rectified output uh, uh, will also have ripples generally of this form. Now, what is a ripple? It is a fluctuating AC component present in the rectified DC output. So this is the rectified output We'll, we cannot call it DC fully, it is actually pulsating DC. Uh, and it, this has two components, the DC component and this is the AC component. Now this fluctuation or the ripple is undesirable. We would prefer to have a straight line. And if you compare the two, this, will, this has larger uh, ripples and this has smaller ripples. So the preference is that we should have as small a uh, ripple as possible. Okay, now this can uh, be redrawn as shown here. This is the output, V load. This is the total output of the rectifier circuit. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, this can be resolved into two parts, two components. One is the DC part. Uh, which is shown here, this line DC, and the other is the AC component, which is the fluctuating component, the AC, and uh, this from top to top is the V ripple, peak by peak. And from this we will calculate VR RMS or VAC RMS. Okay. Now the definition of a percentage of ripple 
is the simple definition is VAC RMS that is RMS value of the signal divided by VDC but it is uh, slightly difficult to calculate VRMS of the uh, AC component and therefore another method has been adopted to find the ripple and that is we take VRMS load now this is this signal the RMS of this signal will be called VRMS load total from here to here all this so we take this and divide this by the DC voltage VDC take a square of it subtract 1 and then we multiply by 100% to get percentage so this formula is uh, preferred or will be used here and the VRMS can be calculated from this formula shown here under root 1 over T average of V square and similarly the VDC has the formula of V average 1 over T integral 0 to 2 uh, 0 to T V load so we'll use these two formulas as well now for the half wave rectifier uh, we this is the circuit the only thing we need to define here is the time period t you can see signal is starting from here going all the way and then going to zero this point is the start of the next signal so this is the time period t which is 2 pi in this case this formula uh, will be used for the uh, ripple factor this will use for the VDC and this is for VRMS. Okay, now let's go to the question number or uh, example 3.1. Calculate the ripple factor for the half wave rectifier. So we need to calculate ripple factor here. This is half wave rectifier. The input voltage is Vm sin omega T. And this ripple factor has to be calculated analytically that is mathematically and also by using MATLAB so I'll not uh, do the MATLAB part the program is given in the book if you have MATLAB software simply plug in the the programs and you should be able to get the answer okay now the input is Vm sin omega t we can uh, draw it like this and the output will be obviously rectified so positive half and then negative is eliminated so this is the output part or the V load part now this output can now be written in mathematical form V load is equal to this is same as input and input is Vm sin omega t so we can say it as Vm sin omega t but this is valid from 0 to pi so when omega t is between 0 and pi this is valid but between pi and 2 pi the signal is 0 so we'll write 0 for omega t between pi and 2 pi so this is how we have defined the uh, output signal or the rectified signal and now the formula uh, we had al earlier uh, written vrms load this can also be written as simply VRMS. Similarly, VDC load can be written as VDC. Other remains same. Okay, so these are the parameters we had already discussed. Now, what we need to do is we need to find VRMS and VDC. First of all, VDC. For VDC, this is the formula that we had discussed. And now since our signal is in two parts from here there is signal and up to this point no signal or zero signal so we'll divide this interval uh, 0 to t into two parts from 0 to t by 2 which is pi and then from t by 2 to t by 2 to t now the first part is the signal v load 0 to t by 2 but the second part is 0 because second part of the t is zero so we can say that for uh, half wave rectifier this is the 
uh, output voltage or the VDC voltage. Okay, now uh, we have to convert the, this T and T by 2 in terms of omega. We know that time period T is given by 1 over frequency and if you multiply both numerator and denominator by 2 pi, then numerator will be 2 pi and denominator, denominator will be 2 pi f which is actually omega. So we write it omega and when we reverse it that is 1 over t it will be omega over 2 pi. So for 1 over t we will write omega over 2 pi. What about t by 2? We know t is 2 pi by omega. So divide this by 2 so we will have pi by omega. So for t by 2 we will write pi by omega and our signal now is vm sin omega t vm sin omega t between this interval. We can integrate now and I hope you know the integral of sin omega t is minus cos. So minus cos vm and we divide by omega and the limit is from 0 to pi by omega. Putting in the values we get this, these terms, I hope you can follow for omega, uh, for t we are now putting pi by omega and 0, so we get this term and 0, oh, this omega omega cancels so cos pi, cos pi is minus 1 and similarly cos 0 is plus 1 and solving we have now minus 2 here, and this gets cancelled, minus sine gets cancelled. So VDC is actually now Vm over pi. Now what is Vm? Vm is the maximum amplitude of the signal. So this point is Vm. Now let's find the RMS value. So this was the formula. Now uh, in, in the case of a half wave rectifier, the signal is only present from 0 to T by 2. So we can modify the formula. And now we'll plug in the value of the Vm sin theta square, it will be Vm square sin square. And we put the value of t as we did in the previous slide. And also the limit. And now since this is sin square integral, for integral we'll write it in as 1 minus uh, cosine 2 form like this. And so we have taken now V out and this is the signal, we uh, can separate it into two parts and then integrate. So we have done it into two parts and then integrating. So this will be the answer. I hope you can follow the steps uh, by pausing the video and integrating. So this, from here we are only getting T, half T. Uh, so multiplied with the omega 2 pi, it will be omega 4 pi T. This is the limit and the integral of cosine is sine omega t divided by 2 omega 2. So this is uh, 8 pi. 2 and 2 and divided by 2 so it will be 8. And this is the uh, again limit is uh, for this. Putting in the values of the limit now in these two and solving we get this term. This will be 0, sine 0 is 0, sine 0 is 0, sine 2 pi is also 0. So all 0 here except for 1, 4. So our answer will be Vm over 2. So this is for the RMS value. So, so now that we have the parameters, VRMS and VDC values, we can calculate the ripple. And just to give you an idea, I have plotted here the two values. You can see uh, this is the RMS value and blue line is showing the DC values. So we'll plug in these values uh, here to get the ripple. VRMS is Vm by 2, so Vm is square 2 is square. Similarly, VDC is Vm by pi, so Vm is square pi is square. And after simplifying, we get this term and which after solving gives us an answer of 1.21 1 
into 100% which is 121% so the ripple factor is 121% and this shows that the uh, half wave rectifier has much more AC values if you can see 1.21% uh, so more AC component uh, in its output than the DC component and therefore half wave rectifier is not ideally suited. And just to give you an idea, uh, a comparison between the half wave rectifier and the full wave rectifier, DC value 0 0.1313, this is 0 0.626, that's double, RMS value 0 0.5 VM and here it is 0 0.707 and the ripple factor as we saw it was 1.21 but in case of a full wave it is 0 0.43 so it is much better i hope this gives you an understanding of the ripple factors etc thank you